Good morning from Lille and welcome at our webinar for the website Administrators of Interreg Europe Projects. My name is Petra and I'm a Communication Officer here at Lille at the Joint Secretariat and I'll be your host today. Uh, I can say that I'm very happy to see that there are more than 40 people joining this webinar and we hope some latecomers will join us too because we had over 80 people registered today and we will be very happy to share with you all the different information on how to edit your project website. I will have my colleagues from the communication team here with me presenting you how your project website fits into the broader program website and also showing you practically how editing of your website works. So really showing you step by step the different uh, tabs and tools that you have at your hands to make your website lively and full of very interesting content. They will also talk about how to make your content more attractive for your uh, target groups and we will also have a few words about how to evaluate your work on the online tools that you decided to use in your project. But before we get to the content, let me say a few technical words about the tool that we are using to present you this webinar today. So, on your right-hand side, you have a small menu. And we hope this menu will be very useful to you and will help you to make the most out of this online meeting with us today. There you can see all the attendees uh, that are with us today. You can also check your sound in case you face any technical difficulties. But mainly, and the most important for you, is the question tab, where you can type in your question and send it our way. Because apart from sharing all the different information that we have ready for you, we want you to ask question questions and we are ready to reply to them, either in typing or we'll be addressing them in a few moments sessions uh, live here in the studio. So um, make use of this little menu and without further delay and ado, I'm very happy to uh, welcome to our studio my colleague Irma. So Irma, come and join me. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Good morning, Petra. Good morning, Irma. Uh, and she will be talking a little bit about the context, uh, where and how your project website and project communication in general fits into our program. Exactly, Petra. And indeed, as this webinar is dedicated to the web administrators and we developed a system that is very easy, seems to, to, to be used, I would be eager to know if uh, we could ask our participants how experienced they are with various content editing uh, programs. Yes. So, for that, we prepared for you a short poll. So, tell us how experienced you are or are not. Uh, in editing uh, websites or various content management systems. So, I have just launched it. Please tell us uh, where you are with I your experience. I think you can choose. We have three answers. One of them is very experienced, so you should do this answer if you have uh, already worked with the various content management systems as Drupal, WordPress, or any other. If you have some experience, then you should choose a second answer. And if you have very little experience or no experience, then it's the third answer for you that says I have a very little or no experience. So, so we see that you are voting. And so thank you very much for being so active. In the meantime, we see that more people came and already 58. Mm -hmm. uh, so welcome. And we are very happy to have you here. 87% voted. I think we just count to three yes. and we can close the poll and share the results with our participants. So, one, two, three. Three. So, closing it and let's have a look at the results. So, I think it's um, quite nice uh, that 18% of you feel very experienced. We still hope that this webinar will be useful to you just to guide you through the different um, tools that we prepared for you for mm -hmm. editing. And especially over 80% say that they have some or no or very little experience. 
indeed yeah. that really really reassures us and the, the results are not so surprising i think the ones who are very experienced um, we have several people who are communication managers um, that will also be appointed to manage uh, the project and update the project website the others probably are lead partners and probably their daily task is not do editing, editing etc yeah. but I am then very glad I think to on behalf of all communication team to say that um, what you will find what system we have that it will be very easy for you to update the content related to your uh, website but about this we will talk a little bit later yes so with this I'm going to hide the poll and it's time to really go through the presentation and for that I'll leave the floor to Irma and I'll see you a bit later when we get to questions and answer. So enjoy the presentation and send us your questions. See you later. Great. So um, together with me, we will, um, Petra already presented you that uh, during this webinar, we will talk about five main things and together we will meet, with me, we will cover two parts, an introduction and I will present you also a big uh, picture where your website is uh, um, within um, our uh, Interreg Europe website. First, you need to know that there is a communication team that is here at the Joint Secretariat in Lille to support you whenever you have website related questions. Um, what is important for you to know that um, as uh, our uh, program has a principle that it's a lead partner who should be in touch with the Joint Secretariat. So in this case, the rule stays the same. So it should be lead partner or project communication manager writing to us on the specific question. And always, always keeping the lead partner, project and finance officers in copy of all your emails and communication with us. Like this, we can ensure a good communication flow. If you don't know yet who is your communication officer, uh, my colleague Josephine is uh, added a list at uh, the chat uh, box so you can then uh, check uh, the document and find out who is communication officer of your project. And indeed, uh, the choice is not that big. We are five team members in our team. It's myself, Irma, you already saw my colleague Petra. You will see Raluca uh, making the presentation uh, also during, for the, during this webinar. Mia, unfortunately, she is not today with us. She's on holidays. And Josephine, you will not see her today. She's assistant of our communication team, but she is with you also moderating the chat, saying you uh, hello and sharing all uh, interesting and relevant documents. So another important thing for you to remind is about our and uh, our program branding and your project branding. Indeed, you already know that our program has a harmonized communication approach and we provide you with several templates. Uh, we provide you with the project logo, uh, so for the third call projects, the logos are already generated and you can find them on the Google Drive. And uh, on the same Google Drive, there is also um, a template for the PowerPoint, which you can customize. Uh, in the upcoming days, for the third call projects, we will be sharing uh, um, a designed uh, poster template, which you will be able then to, to comment. And I think in the upcoming two weeks, we will finalize this as well. And as part of the templates or some tools we provide, it's also your website. And uh, to, to see where your website indeed is in this big, big picture, indeed it's um, each project that is financed by the Intra Europe has its own website and the same rule applies as you have uh, the color corresponding to the topic of your project. So your website color will be also reflected, um, uh, website color also corresponds uh, to, to the topic. So if you are, for example, from the research and innovation, your website will have a yellow dominating color. So let's now check where is indeed your website in this uh, big picture. First of all, you can access your website from Discover a Project page. 
And uh, there, if you type intra-Europe slash acronym, it uh, will be your project uh, uh, page, a short name to access your project uh, landing page. Another um, uh, place where you can find the project website is also under the search function. And indeed, if you would have clicked on those hexagons uh, in the previous page, you could have ended in the list. And then you can sort the projects according to their topics, according to the country, uh, etc. Uh, on our uh, pro program landing page, home page, at the very um, bottom, you see the latest news. And in the latest news, we always showcase six news, and some of those news come from projects. If you see um, on those cards, there is a tag project, so those news are coming from the project website. So that's why it's indeed important to have your project website updated so that we could give also a visibility on our um, also landing page on uh, your project activities. Uh, every month, we are also um, featuring a project on Discover Projects page. And um, so in the future, when you will be more advanced and when your website will be richer content-wise, uh, it will be also featured on that page. And um, for till now, we usually uh, were featuring one uh, project per month and also advertising it on our newsletter so that generated more traffic for the project. And um, on our project, uh, on our program website, you also have a section in my country where information is automatically generated from the, um, from the project uh, website where we can find uh, the project uh, projects and project uh, partners indeed on the, on the cards uh, to see uh, and we can see uh, which projects are related to a specific country. Um, what is an added value to have your uh, page always updated and also what is the added value to be active on social media? Um, you will learn that you can um, embed uh, social media buttons. Indeed, uh, the program always um, is following you and your activities. And um, we have a Twitter Twitter list and we are very glad to, to reshare and retweet our project news on our social media uh, channels. If you have, a, if you will have, or you have a, a YouTube channel, uh, we have uh, the featured uh, projects, uh, videos on a side of our channel. So again, again, it helps you to have more visibility. And also uh, we follow all our projects on our Facebook channel and again here we are sharing the posts of on and updates from the projects. So again use all this um, the program uh, channels or support the program uh, is providing uh, so that your project would get more visibility. Now we will go to um, your project website and probably you already seen, I guess you were very eager to, to, to see how your project website looks like and you have seen that you, each of you have an individual website with the same layout. That is a public face of your project where you should um, update the content with various activities, events and news and the website should reflect also your project's communication plan. You already saw that um, when your website was generated, there is some content that was automatically transferred from the I.O. for our online uh, system to the website, which is the name of your project, the acronym, the summary partners, partnership map, budget duration, policy instruments. And probably you also noticed that some of this content you can edit and some not. Here now on the screen, on the slide, you see the orange arrows uh, pointing to the section summary, partners, and policy instruments. Those are the three sections where you can edit the content and my colleague Raluca soon will explain how to do it. One more important uh, thing to say on that, that in uh, it's a very special case that the good practices you probably also saw that the third call projects don't have good practices yet, but um, if you would check the pages of uh, our first and second call projects, you would see also some good practices. 
um, on the project website. Indeed, the good practices are submitted by various users and will appear on your project website once approved by the web administrators. Um, in relation to the content, uh, there is also some content you will be updating um, by yourself and uh, it will be you who will have a, a control over that. That's about news and events, all the pictures you will be uploading, all social media feeds, links, uh, calls to actions um, bar and also various documents. So your role as the website administrator will be to edit your project website. And the program requirement is that your project website should be edited minimum uh, once in six months. But sure, we recommend to do it more often that your website will be always um, updated. And as I mentioned before, there are big advantages for that for your project visibility. Um, so uh, that's the first, to edit your project website. The second role you will have is to approve good practices submitted by the project partners that will appear under the good practices. And the third role you will have is to validate people's requests to be linked to your project. It means that now um, some of you already contacted us while registering to our lead uh, partner uh, um, seminar and you told that from the list uh, when you register to the seminar from the when you created your community profile, you couldn't uh, mention or link your profile with the project. Now when the project websites are live, you can do it. So um, please link now your profile with your project and indeed uh, your project partners also can do. And being a web administrator, you will see uh, which people um, links the profiles um, to the project and you need to approve so that uh, those people would be afterwards associated with your uh, project um, uh, pages. So that um, with this uh, overview, I with this presentation I give you an overview. Um, where is your indeed project website in this big picture of Interreg Europe's um, website. And now I will pass the word to, to, to Petra. So thanks a lot, Irma, for this presentation, for this introduction mm -hmm. in how project pages fit into the program framework. Yeah. So thanks a lot. Uh, in Indeed, I am uh, leaving uh, the screen, but I am staying here with you. And if you have questions, I will be answering them via the chat box. So send us your questions. Some of them will be very happy to reply live when Raluca joins me just in a second. Some of them will be typing in the chat box. So use your question tab, send us your question. And after Raluca, and with this, I'm happy to welcome or invite my colleague Raluca here to the Good studio. Morning. Good, Good morning, morning Good Raluca. Morning, everybody. Uh, and she will tell you a little more about more the practical side of editing your website. But maybe before we get to that, mm -hmm. um, we are quite interested to see whether you have already tried it, whether you have already had a closer look, how the project websites look, what is the possibility of editing them. So we will launch a second poll, again a short one, just to see uh, whether you have already started it. It's a simple poll, just asking, uh, have you already edited something on uh, your project website? So just tell us simply yes, no, uh, and we'll share with you the results uh, in a few seconds. In the in the meantime, Petra, maybe we can mention that we already had a look mm -hmm. uh, on our Discover Projects page, and we've seen that some of you have already been active in updating their project website. So I just want to congratulate those that already put a lot of significant effort into mm -hmm. that. And just to mention some of those to see that we are really paying attention to this. Uh, congratulations to Silver SMEs, to Device, and to Resort. So thank you so much for being active <laughs> yeah. and we hope the rest of you, the, all the other projects, will certainly have a look at that and after this webinar get into uh, editing the content mm. and informing all the target groups uh, about the good things that your project is about to do or has done <laughs> later on. So with this poll, 91% uh, of you voted. Thank you so wow, much for being so active. <laughs> so I'm closing the poll and now have a look uh, how or what the results are. So 
40%, almost 40% of you already tried it. So that's great. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that Silver SMEs, Device and Resort are among those. So that's great. Uh, 61 hasn't tried it yet. I don't think that's an issue. What do you no, say? No, no, of course not. This is the reason why we organized this webinar so that we can go through all the main aspects with you and hopefully after we end this webinar you will all be eager to start looking closer and updating content and so, content and so on. Okay, so with this uh, I'm going to close the poll and I'll leave the floor to Raluca mm -hmm. to show you a little more closer how to edit the project website. Yes. Uh, so. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Petra. I'll just use the keyboard. So uh, I'll say again good morning to everybody. Uh, so my name is Raluca. I was already mentioned several times, so I suppose you got that by now. And in the upcoming 30 minutes or so, we will be uh, we will be discussing together about three main aspects about your project website. The first one is how to work in the edit module. The second one is how to make your uh, content more attractive and therefore your project website. And the third one is how to evaluate, so how to see the traffic and monitor to see how well you are doing with your project website and that will be about Google Analytics. So uh, with no further introduction, let's see about editing your project website. I'll just mention now that my presentation will be in parts through the slides and um, most of it, it will also be through uh, live navigation. So at some point I will switch to the actual website and I'll show to you how to do specific things. So how to edit your project website. Um, well, that is pretty simple uh, and I hope most of you know that already, that by simply logging in to our website with your community account, you should see in your dashboard the projects for which you are allocated a website administrator. If this is not the case and you know you should have the role of website administrator, you should just let us know uh, and once you are logged into the community, we will make the changes in the system so that you will see what you are supposed to see directly on your dashboard. And before switching to the live navigation, um, I would also like to mention the fact that um, here at the Secretariat, the policy officers, finance officers and the communication officers that are in charge of monitoring your website are not notified throughout emails from time to time when you edit your website. So this means, for example, whenever you post a new event, when you work on a new event and you publish it, your policy officer and your finance officer will receive such a notification letting them know that there is a new activity now on your project website so that they can uh, see what's happening. On the other side, the communication officers receive notification about everything that you are doing on your uh, project website. So, um, let's switch now uh, to the live navigation and I'll just uh, for a second, uh, Petra, maybe you can help me a oh, second, for, sorry for, for that. Can help. <laughs> so, let's switch to the live version. Uh, yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Petra showed me this before going <laughs> live, but I'm sure as yeah. you can understand, being yeah. live puts a little bit of pressure on the presenter. But so, so now it's on. Now Thanks you are live. Petra. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, we are on the Interreg Europe website. Um, given that I already logged in to save some time, you don't see my Interreg, you see that in my Interreg Europe I already have 95%. Um, but in principle, in order to log in, you just have to push the button My Interreg Europe and to put your email address and then the password and then you will end up in this wonderful place which is your dashboard. This is the, the starting point for everything that you do on your project website. So when you log in, you will see under your activity tab um, a section called My Projects. Uh, for this webinar, I've made myself uh, an administrator for several projects so that you can see what's actually happening. So you can see here that I have three projects, Relos 3, Food Chains for You, and Digitores. Uh, at your dashboard level, you see the project, you see the moment in which there was a last update on that project website, and you can also see under Actions two uh, buttons. The first one is the Edit one, where you will go whenever you need to edit your website, and the second one is the History. So when you click on History, 
you will actually see a long page detailing all the different changes that were done on a project website. So who did what? Uh, this might be useful if you are several website administrators in charge of a particular project website to see uh, what, uh, what, who did what. Um, now let's go into the details of editing your project website. So when you click the edit button you end up in the uh, in the screen with where you have all the, the different functionalities. I'll just start by uh, pointing out the different tabs about the project, policy instruments, news, events, contacts, sidebar, extra pages, library and users. Um, maybe a point on this, you probably notice that the good practices are not there and this probably speaks more for the, second, for the first and second call projects that might be with us today. So the good practices tab, it's under the initial dashboard screen. So where you see your projects, you have this tab called good practices. It's not under the event module. Now to go back to the event module, this is where you will work for editing various aspects of your project website, but while working, of course, you might be interested to see how does all this look on live, so what people actually see. Because the principle of editing your project website is that as you edit things along and you click save, everything shows on live. So um, you might want to open the actual page as well in parallel to when you are working on something. In this case, it's the Relos 3 website. The back end, uh, so this, this, uh, the edit module, the, the, um, the tabs that you see in the, back mo in, the back, in the edit module correspond to what actually exists on live. We wanted to make it as simple as possible so that you can follow where to do changes. So in the about the project, you actually see the information that is on your home page. Um, as Irma already explained, there are some things that you cannot edit on your uh, project website and that come automatically from the IOLF, which is the online application system, such as the title of your project, this you cannot change. Um, but then you have the summary, which, which is uh, transferred to the abstract here. This you can see already that you can change. You can do uh, any type of change that you, you feel necessary and probably there are some changes needed given that the content on your website should have your audience in mind and it's not the same as uh, what you've put in the application form. But before going to the abstract, you see at the top the cover image. The cover image, it's actually the image that shows at the top of your home page. You can always change this image um, you have the possibility to upload um, a new image by going to choose file and to upload something from your computer or you have the possibility to pick from a pool. We've put together a pool of images to facilitate for you the upload of such uh, images. Um, a very important information at this point as we are talking about the images is that you should pay very careful attention to the copyright rules. Um, we, we advise that you use uh, photos that you did yourself or that the photographer took for you and you have the full copyright on that or you can use some of the databases, existing uh, online databases with images but you need always to pay attention to what, is the, what are the copyright rules. Sometimes it might be that you need to mention who did the photo even if you have the rights to use it. So please pay special attention to that. Um, to go lower down on this page, you have a section which is called the page content and this is something that shows on the, on the live site uh, beneath the partnership. You have the possibility to edit that or not, but please at, pay attention to the fact that um, when, you, when your website went live, there was a, a section called what will this project change because we thought it would be important for your audience uh, for the audiences of your website to highlight from the home page what is the main purpose of your project. If you don't plan to use that, just pay attention that nothing is in this field because if not it would show live. At the bottom of the screen you have the, you have the URLs for social media in case you are using and you've set up accounts for your social media. You can copy paste here the exact links to that. 
the place in which these links will show on the live website are at the top. You can see at the top navigation level you have Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn which corresponds to the actual uh, things that were put here in Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. This is what you can see in the, about the project. The next tab is the policy instruments. The policy instruments show on the home page in this type of accordion view. You have it here, right? This, this is the part with the policy instruments. And in order to uh, expand and collapse, you just have to click the buttons. For the policy instruments, you have the possibility to edit some information, but not everything. You cannot edit the title of the policy instrument and you cannot edit the partners that are involved in it. However, you can edit the content itself, the text. Um, at this point, I, I realize I'm, I forgot to mention one very important thing uh, when speaking about all the text that you can input in your website. Um, it's important to mention that you have rich text editor, meaning that you have a lot of different possibilities uh, when you put text on your website. This means you, cannot, you, can, uh, you can create bold, you can put images, you can embed videos, um, you can create headers, subheaders, and so on. So you have a lot of possibilities that you would normally have in Word, for example, you have them in your uh, website edit module. And one more thing related to that, and pay please a lot of attention to when you copy paste uh, text or information from, uh, let's say, a Word or a different type of document in your uh, website edit module. You might be tempted to do that. Uh, this is okay to do, but you need to absolutely remove the formatting in the text before you paste it to the website edit module. Because if not, there might be errors and you might not be able to further work on the website edit module. The easy way to do that is just to copy your text, put it in a program such as Notepad uh, that will clear all the formatting and then paste it to your website edit module and afterwards you can do all the editing. For example, put things in bold, add images, videos and so on as I just uh, explained. Um, in order to see all the functionalities that you have, um, whenever you have a, um, a window with, a text, uh, with, with text uh, possibilities, you have here all the styles and effects at the top. So, like, as I mentioned, bold, italic, underline, um, you can put bullets, you can do a numbered list, you can hyperlink, you can put an image on. Uh, whenever you want to switch to embedding something, and we will see a little bit later on how to embed, for example, a video uh, on your website, you just need to switch to HTML. Um, to continue, we go to, a next, to the next two tabs, which are news and events. The, the two tabs, news and events, are, a little, are similar uh, at a large extent. However, there are two things that differ between news and events, and this corresponds to the way in which we uh, define and um, put in place news and events at program level. Um, so we, we advise that you create as an event um, something that relates to an actual event happening with your uh, project, such as a kickoff uh, or a conference that you are planning and so on. You will notice when you are in the events uh, section that you have fields uh, such as what's the start date, what's the end date, what is the exact venue and the address because uh, by putting in the address on the event itself you will see uh, a map showing the exact location. Um, you will also see uh, things like a registration URL. So if there is a specific registration link where people need to have to register before going to the event, this is where you have to put it. All these specific things, that, the specific fields that I just mentioned, don't exist for the news. So uh, news, you in news you will put whatever it is newsworthy apart from uh, what we consider as an event. Um, uh, just to see a little bit as well the news uh, tab. Uh, so in general, for a news or for an event, you will of course need to put a title. 
uh, you will have a date when uh, you publish it. Then you have to put the cover photo, which is the big photo that will show on the actual news. The summary is where um, you should put a short introduction about what is the, the main information about your news or about your event. And this short summary together with the photo will show up on your actual page. And I'll show you this. On Real of 3, the, the, the photo, the cover photo and the short summary, summary that you put will actually show on this news or event card that will show on your project website, but as well at our program level. Um, and a little bit, and a, a small tip on this, um, even though the information that you put in terms of news and events uh, might be um, self-explanatory that comes from your project, when we look at your project website, remember that your news and events go as well on our program website. And over there, if people don't see your project acronym, somewhere in the title or in the short description, they will be a little bit lost. They will not know from which project it comes. So maybe try to put the, your project acronym, if not possible, a title, at least in the short summary. We switch to the next tab, which is the contacts. And this is, uh, I think, uh, um, a, a field or a tab that you visit quite a lot. And uh, when your website goes live at the beginning, there are also some issues with this because uh, there might be some misunderstandings. Um, just to point out the general principle is that the context that you will see on your project website are the partners involved in your project and their information comes automatically from your application, so from this IOS that we already mentioned. However, we made it possible that it is possible to update the information that is on your website. You can do that, actually, let's go back a step to that. You can edit what people, you, you can edit what people see on your website, but you need to do that on the IOS because we need to have the relevant information about the project partners, not only at your website level, but as well in the IELTS. So whenever there are changes in the partnership, you need to do the changes in IELTS, and they will be automatically synchronized to your project website in about a week. Um, you can also, un under the contacts, uh, you will see that, for example, the partner name, the role, and the contact, you cannot change. You can, however, update the website URL, put a small description of that particular uh, partner, and you can put a logo. You can as well update the exact geolocalization of that partner, and this geolocalization shows on the home page in the partnership map. So on your page, you have on your home page, you have a partnership map, and this is linked to the information that you put in the contacts page. So if ever you notice that one of your partners uh, should be, for example, in Barcelona, but it's not, it's somewhere in the US, this is because there was a mistake um, the, or there, Google has some issues in lo properly localize it, and then you just need to put the GPS coordinates and everything should be fine. The next tab is the sidebar. And in the sidebar, you will actually see all the small things that you could that you can put on your website on the right hand side. You can see here on the Relos project that they put up a sign up for their newsletter and also their Twitter feed. You can decide to put more than this. You can put, decide to put a specific call to actions to highlight, uh, I don't know, if you have a specific publication, if you have a LinkedIn group or things like this, you can always create a specific uh, call to action for that. And the way in which you do this, so in the sidebar, you have several things that you can put. You have the newsletter link. This is if you have already set up a sign-up form for your newsletter, and this is not something you can do throughout the website edit module. This is something that you can do outside. Um, programs such as MailChimp offer this opportunity. You can embed your Facebook timeline if you wish to, and in order to do this, you first need to go to Facebook, generate your code, and afterwards put it in the edit module. Everything about this is detailed in the general guidelines on your website. 
You can also embed a Twitter timeline and the way to do this is similar to what we explained for Facebook. You first need to go to Twitter, generate your code and afterwards you will place it uh, here in the Twitter timeline. A point of attention on that, um, normally for Facebook it should, there shouldn't be a lot of issues in terms of how big and how wide um, is the, the feed that you generate. However, for Twitter, in general, um, the feeds that you generate and you put on your website edit module have the tendency to be very long. So please pay attention when we generate your code to make sure that it is not wider than uh, 500 pixels. You can also, as I mentioned, in this, um, in this uh, sidebar section, create custom uh, call to action. And here is how you do it. You put a title, a text, an image, and this is how you can do it. Once you create several call to actions, you will see them here in the project call to actions, and you will be able to arrange them. Let's say you have three of those. And at a specific moment in time, you, are, uh, you want to make sure that the one that you created at the bottom, which is actually the more important one for the audience, needs to be at the top. You will be able to do this once you create them. You will be able to, uh, you will see there are some arrows and put up and down. Um, towards the, the end of this screen, you will see the extra pages. So you have the possibility to create specific pages on your website. Um, if you want to. Uh, for, the, for the website, for example, Relo Street, there are no extra pages. There are other uh, projects that decided to use this, um, but um, uh, on this one we, we don't have uh, such an example. So you can create an extra page that will actually show at the main navigation level and it will be called as you call it. Uh, let's say, um, I don't know what could possibly be here, uh, videos. Let's say you decide to create something which is called videos. You, you, by creating it, it will show here uh, after the library. And then you have the possibility to create it by putting, of course, like uh, in any type of content, to put a title, to put a cover image, a body, and afterwards everything that you need over there. Your extra page can have as well sub-pages if needed be. Um, and with all this, I encourage you to um, I encourage you to start experimenting and see how it works if it works uh, how you imagined it to be. Uh, in general, as I already mentioned, at the website edit module, the principle is that whenever you save, and I encourage you to save as often as you feel it. Um, when you save, everything goes live. However, there are some exceptions to this rule, and the exceptions are the extra pages, because here you will notice that you have, that you have a, call, uh, a field called Enable Page. This means before you tick this button, whatever you put on this page will not be shown publicly. publicly. It will be visible for you, but it will not show for the world. This is the case as well. Um, for the library. For the library as well, you have this tick box enable page. In the library, the principle is that before being able to upload pieces of content such as images, uh, documents, uh, and so on, you need to create the folder. So you need to group your content in folders. So first you will create a folder here, add new folder, and afterwards you can upload what is needed inside the library. Again, um, in the library I think it's important that you go through uh, the, the edit module and see what are the options, but um, on the landing page of the library you will always have the introductory text, so this is what people see when they go to your library, and this, in this Relos case you can see that there is a text saying in this folder we will keep all the various documents, um, so this is uh, the introductory text. And then here you create your folders. And the actual folders that they created, you can see them here. Media appearances, report events, videos in Malta. After you create your folders, and by creating your folder you put a name, a description, a cover image, you say in which theme it is. You can put text to it. This means it will help with the search of it. Um, your folders will appear underneath. And again, like I told you for the call to actions, you have the possibility to arrange in which, um, in which uh, sequence they would appear for the, for the people visiting your website. And when we, go, um, when we go to a specific folder, let's say the report of the events, 
we, we, you see that you can create a folder item and you have the possibility to upload to your library uh, an image, a document and put a link to a video. You cannot upload a video directly to our website. You need to use a platform such as uh, YouTube, let's say, where you can where you should upload your video and only afterwards when you have the when you have the link you can paste it here. Uh, once you did that all the folder items will appear underneath underneath um, and they will show on lives uh, as you see here on the report events. Um, the last but not least there is the tab called users uh, and in the users you will see all the people that said they have a link to your project. So when the when people log in to the Interreg Europe community, when they create an account on the Interreg uh, Europe uh, community, they have the possibility to say if they are somehow linked to your project. They have a drop down list where they see all the projects that we finance, so the 184 that we currently have, and they can choose your project acronym. Once they did that, they will appear in this list that you see here under uh, users. So you will see those that are waiting for approval and those that are already connected to the project. You just need to take a simple action of approving or uh, dismissing their requ requests. Uh, pay attention to the fact that you will not receive automatic notifications for this. So you need to check yourself from time to time um, this part of the, of the edit module. Um, I will end this part of the, um, of the presentation by going back actually to my presentation uh, and pointing out some of the common issues and some tips that you need to have in mind. So the missing partners, if you notice that there are some missing partners on the map, um, you need to edit the GPS coordinates under contacts. If you see that you need to edit the contact details, you need to do this directly in the IELF. You need to avoid to put special characters on any type of document names. It might be the case for partners coming from, let's say, Greece um, or Bulgaria. Avoid putting special characters on. Um, pay attention to the length of your Twitter feed, so try not to put it too long. Um, and um, very important, clear the formatting, so don't just copy-paste information from Word directly to the edit module. And um, keep in mind the difference between the events and the news um, and the, the copyright rules for the photos. You can find all the information that you might need in the help and support page and you will see on the screen what is the exact link and my colleagues will as well put it in the chat. Over there we have uh, an FAQ with all the possible question and answers but as well very important links to the principal guide to the website, uh, our particular style guide um, and all the other help uh, that you might need. And now it's time for questions. Yes, so thank you, Raluca, for this very, very detailed uh, guidance uh, through this uh, editing tool. Uh, I hope uh, it was very useful to you, especially for those who don't have much experience uh, with editing websites. And we hope that uh, you will find uh, uh, this tool useful uh, for your editing. Now, as we have a little time for questions. Uh, we are kind of, uh, there is a lot of information yes. to share with you, so we might uh, extend uh, our webinar a short, short uh, time longer, but let's move to questions. Mm -hmm. So, um, thank you for sending them first. That's great. Uh, so we have a question from Brigitte. So she's asking, how can you add information to the partner map? So. Um, you cannot really add information, depends on what type of information you mean, uh, Brigitte. Uh, it, it, do you mean that you need to add some details about a partner? If you need to add details about a partner in terms of what is their role in the partnership or what is the exact website address of that particular partner, this is, this is something that you can do uh, in the contacts in the website edit module. However, if the changes that you mean are more related to the fact that a partner withdrew uh, or that is a change, uh, a major change in your project partnership, this you can do only throughout the IELTS. This is an information that you need to pass 
to mm -hmm. the application system and from that on once it is validated by our colleagues it will appear on your project website. Mm -hmm. Brigitte in the meantime specified a little more mm -hmm. uh, that she also means logos and a contact person. Okay, so what about but logos? For the for the logos, this is something that you can change and upload directly on the edit module. So I, I would advise you to go to your website edit module now and see under the contacts that you can always uh, update or change the logo. Um, and the other question was about oh, contact person. For the, example, if mm -hmm. you have a partner institution that is represented by someone, but maybe there is another person also representing mm -hmm. this institution. How can they do this? For In this type of scenario, Brigitte, what we thought is that it's useful to link to your project website as well other users of the Interreg Europe community. So here is where I mentioned just earlier that people can, uh, can uh, throughout registration, say that they are linked to a project. And once you validate them, they will show up in the contacts page. At the beginning of the contacts page uh, in the live website, you will see the like official partners. And underneath, you will have a second section that is called users, where you will see all the other people that you agreed that are uh, somehow connected to your project. Yeah. So in a way, what is in IOV, it's the official contact mm -hmm. person of the institution, but if there is anyone additional, if they create yeah. an account and then link it to the project, both of them can be visible. Yes. So I hope this was helpful for Brigitte. Uh, now we have another question. Elise uh, is asking, is there a recommended size for photos on news and events pages? Yes, there is. And I'm afraid I don't know that by heart. But you have this uh, in the general FAQs on your project website. And my colleagues will copy paste the exact link to that uh, in the chat. OK. Uh, so sorry, but you will get the information either directly in and the chat. Just, just maybe a point on that. The, there, is a recommended, um, uh, the, there is a recommended size for photos on the various aspects of the website. So not only on the news and events, as well for the contacts and the logos as well for the call to actions and all that we've put together a small list that you will see as I mentioned in the question in the frequent ask word questions. Okay, so we hope you'll get that information. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, last question before we move on and mm -hmm. talk more about how to make your project page more visible. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Giuseppe and Giuseppe is asking, um, we started the project and tomorrow we will begin our communication but we did not receive the poster yet okay so this is about the poster yes um, so about the poster as Irma mentioned earlier in this presentation we are working on your posters and we should have the first draft of your poster in the coming days or in the the beginning of the next week you will receive this draft version that you will need to check of course to see that the, the information is relevant and once you do that you will provide the feedback and we will finalize them i don't think this will happen in the upcoming week or so so you might think of a back plan for the, if there is an event or something like this you might want to use just your logo for the time being that might be a good plan b exactly so Please be patient with us. We are working on mm -hmm. it. Okay, with this, uh, I'll close the live Q&A and mm -hmm. let Raluca continue with yes. the, uh, with her presentation. Please uh, be patient with us. Maybe we'll stay a bit longer to really yeah. share with you all we want. Uh, send us your question and we'll continue answering them. So, Raluca, please continue with the presentation. Yes, thank you, Petra. So, uh, in the first part of the presentation, I showed you, uh, or I, I more talked than showed, but uh, about what are the main functionalities and how you can work on your website edit module. Just to sum up, some of the key learnings that you should take from this webinar uh, are, you shouldn't copy-paste formatted text to your website. So, try copy-pasting copy first to Notepad and then to your website edit module. Pay attention to saving your information as you go along and as well pay attention to what you delete because once it's deleted, it's lost, okay? Um, and then, of course, pay attention to the copyright rules. This is, again, very important. Um, we switch now to uh, the second part of the website uh, of, the, of my presentation, uh, which is how to, how to make your website more attractive.
because it's important to know how to technically do it, but it's even more important what you put in it to make sure that it is appealing to your audience. So when you are writing on your project website, when you are updating information, you need to have in mind your audience and of course as well the goals for your communication um, uh, uh, as I lined out in your communication strategy. When I say think about your audience, I mean uh, try to picture real people because it's real people that will actually read the, what, what you are uh, writing or interact with your content. And on the other hand, think of the fact, uh, think of the context in which they uh, see what you are putting. So everything is online. And when we write for the web or when we create things for the web, we have to pay attention to special things because this is different to, uh, for example, having a brochure or any type of communication uh, tool. Here are some tips for good online content. You need to use clear language. We all appreciate to read short sentences, for example, that are written in an English language that we can all understand. So use normal everyday words, try to avoid as much as possible jargon, uh, Latin, acronyms, and all these type of things that might mean something for you or within your partnership, but not a lot to the outside audience. It's very important as well uh, to think about the way in which you structure information on your website. And we know by now that people um, can and have the possibility to go through content if it's well structured. And you will notice this even if you yourself go now and visit a specific website, you will see that you appreciate much more if the content is divided in blocks of text. And if you can clearly see at a glance that you have three pieces of information. If at the top of the website you can see already what is the most important piece of information so that you can see at a glance already what the article or the event will be about. Afterwards, it's important to use headers and subheaders, again, in the, in the respect of uh, guiding the people throughout the content that they will see. You can also use, and it's highly recommended, to use images and videos as dividers for your text. So let's say your article has three paragraphs. You would have a, a header for your first paragraph. You will have a text and then a nice picture to illustrate it or even a video so that the people can interact with your content. That makes this as well quite appealing. So pay, pay real attention uh, to the structure of what you are writing as well as the manner in which you express yourself. You might want to rather um, express about yourself in terms of we and us and to, uh, use you for your audience. It's also important to highlight particular pieces of content, so don't be afraid to bold keywords. However, you should try not to overdo it, because if you have an article full of bolded um, notions, that you will not be able to really notice what is really important. Um, don't be afraid to use links. This is how you will encourage people to discover from a specific article yet another piece of content that you already uh, posted live. When putting links, you should avoid copy-pasting the exact web address and rather hyperlink a specific uh, word, a specific notion within your article. More useful tips uh, can be found on our website, on the help page for the, uh, for the website administrators. And again, my colleagues will uh, copy-paste this in the, in the chat box uh, so you can have uh, a more deeper look. Now, uh, of course, it's important, and I'm sure you are all aware of this, uh, not only to make sure that you know how to edit your website, that you put the good content on it, but to make sure that this, all this information actually reaches the people that you intended to reach. So how can you get more visitors to your project website? The, the easy solution and response to that is make sure to promote it. Um, you, can, you, you need to spread your content uh, on all possible communication tools. So make sure that you always include a direct link to your website on all the different, um, all the different tools that you use and produce. It can be uh, in your, even in your signature, in your email signature, uh, or on your social media if you use those, uh, on a brochure if you produce that, in a newsletter and so on. So make sure to put it everywhere that you can. 
and don't be afraid to share, of course, the news um, around you uh, with your partnership uh, within the newsletter list that you created on social media and so, and so on. So spreading the word as much as possible uh, has a lot of benefits. Um, and because I mentioned social media, you can you can use you can decide to use that. But if you do it, you have to pay attention to to some key aspects. Um, you don't have to be on every channel. Uh, it might be that not everything is um, in accordance to your project and the goals of your project. So pay attention to which ones you use because you will need to put some efforts in using it. Um, whenever you post things, you need to think of your audience on that particular channel. So what you post on Facebook might not be ex exactly the same on Twitter and on LinkedIn, for example. And as I already mentioned, you need to reserve time and resources to animate your community on this social media networks. It's time now for the second round of questions. So I'll uh, invite Petra close to me so that she can tell me if there so, are any questions. So thank you, Raluca, again for presenting some tips on how to mm -hmm. make uh, the web pages uh, about your project as attractive as possible and spread them as wide as possible. Now let's have what other questions uh, came in the meantime. Um, so uh, we can have a question. Um, Okay, uh, we have a question from Camille. Uh, she's asking, how can we ask to be connected to a project? You talked about other project partners, other users to be connected with the project. So how, how can they actually do it? Um, you can do this by when you create your account to the Interreg Europe community. So you register, when you register in the form that you need to fill in, um, you will see uh, a question, if I'm not mistaken, is something like, uh, are you uh, linked with a project, um, with an already existing Interreg Europe uh, project? And over there, you have a drop-down list um, where, in principle, you should find the acronym of the project that interests you. So you just need to uh, add that, to click on that, and afterwards, when you submit your registration form, your request will be sent to the website administrator, to that particular project website administrator. Let's say you need to be connected to Resor. So you will uh, click on the drop-down list, you will search Resor, you will uh, select Resor, and with the submission of your um, registration form, the Resor website administrator will look on his website edit module under the tab users and over there they will see that Camille wanted to be connected with Resor and it will be up to them to decide if you are a person that is actually connected or not. Okay, yes. I hope that's I hope that's clear. So it in a way is it will be one of your roles to check which members of the online community of Interreg Europe are interested to be connected with mm -hmm. your project and then approve or not approve this interest. Yeah. Uh, maybe an additional uh, detail about this. What if uh, some of our participants already registered? Yeah. They are already in, but they uh -huh. haven't done this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, what, what can they do? Um, you can always edit this once you are logged in. Uh, to your profile, you go to uh, about you or about your organization tab. I can't remember like this in which one it is, but you might want to check about you and about your organization. And again, over there, you will see the neck, the same uh, question uh, that people that are not registered seen at the initial screen. So you can always uh, edit this even after you created your account. Okay, so it is still possible. You can certainly spread this message with all your partnership. If they have additional people from the institutions who mm -hmm. want to be linked to the project, and then it will be up to you to control whether these people are actually really using yes. the project and working with the project. So I think we answered this question. Now we have another question. Uh, Celia is asking, uh, can you upload news or events when the date is after the current date? And now I'm not 100% sure whether you mean in the future or it happened in the past. But can you play a little bit yes. with the dates? Yeah, yeah, you can. And actually, this is maybe a point of attention. So when you when you are working on your news or on your events, the dates that you will put uh, 
when editing, it will be the actual date when it will show up on the website. So um, it it depends on what is it that you want to do, but you can yeah you can uh, play around with that. But that's mainly for news. Yes, for events, it's the start and date. I yeah, guess, yeah, right? indeed, yes, for the you're right for the events. You you have to put what is the start and the end date uh, of your event. Yeah, would it make sense for an event to actually put with the past date? Mm -hmm. Like event uh, happened yeah. and yeah. Uh, yes, if you if you somehow didn't know about it before happening, before it took place, but you can as well. It might maybe make more sense that you publish a news about an event that happened to highlight what happened in that particular event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So because our events are more mm. for future, yes, so exactly. that people can register and yeah. kind of come. Okay, okay. So. Um, Another question. Uh, Miriam is getting back a little bit to the size of the pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, and she has a specific question uh, for the size, optimal size for the header, you know, for the big uh -huh. picture that yeah. is for the project. So um, do we have a suggestion for that? In terms of what it is exactly or how to um, optimal how size? To opti well, the, I think the optimal size was around, uh, uh, the, uh, in terms of, in general, you shouldn't upload pictures that add more than one megabytes to your website. This is uh, really because you, you need to have in mind that there are 184 project websites that we host on our website. So this makes it a lot. And if everybody puts um, data that ha is really big, this will create loading and navigation slowness for everyone. So please try to have this in mind and never upload an image that is more than one megabyte. Uh, after that, in terms of resolution, um, I think I, I'm, I'm not completely, I don't have the exact number in mind, but I think it was around a thousand of pixels. I think Wide. Like 1,400 was the width and about 500 was the, With was height. the height. Um, but again, I, all these details the are in, in the FAQ. Um, we don't know them by heart neither. <laughs> and it, it can be, even though we are working with our website on a daily basis, um, a lot of times it will also be a question of trying, testing it out and see what actually shows up. Because it might be uh, that you have a nice photo that has somebody in the center but when you put it for the news, the zooming effect that exists on our website makes it that uh, it's not that well centered. So you'll need to or add a person it. have a hat cut yeah. off. So, <laughs> so this, this happens. This a happens. Uh, you shouldn't be afraid of the, those things. You just need to uh, try it out and see how it goes. And uh, don't be afraid to reload and put a new photo and so on. Okay. Test it out and see. Okay, so that was about pictures. And maybe a last question because, before I let you finish mm -hmm. and talk a little bit about the evaluation of mm -hmm. what is happening on your pages. Uh, you talked about social media and mm -hmm. uh, we have a question uh, by Giuseppe and he's asking whether you have any specific suggestions in creation of a Facebook page. I know this is very general, <laughs> but maybe some tips. Uh, maybe how to create it, how to, uh, or whether to create it, a uh, uh, few words maybe. Yes, <laughs> about uh, that. again, that this, is, this is really, this is really general. Uh, what I can say in general matters is that you should create it only if you think of a specific objective for it. If you think it can bring an added value to your uh, general communication strategy, uh, I've seen some projects that created such a page to give a more, let's say, to give more information or what's happening on the backstages of their projects, how they are organizing between themselves. Uh, so it's more the human size of, a, of your partnership, if you want. Uh, but again, it depends a lot on what is it that you want to do with it. Mm. And as well, uh, as I already mentioned, you should pay attention to the fact that you need to put some efforts. It's not only the fact that you need to create it, which I think it's the least of your uh, time spent, yes, mm. and work. It will be more about what you will do afterwards in animating it and see what are your followers, make sure that you provide nice and appealing content to them and so on. So mm. on. Updating. Yeah. yeah. 
and whether your target group is using Facebook, yeah. also consider that. Yeah. Is of are course. you maybe trying to reach younger yeah. people or people who mm -hmm. in general tend to use Facebook? I yeah. think that's also another consideration. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll stop with your question for the moment, uh, but I'll come back at the very end yes. and we'll have a few additional questions. So please finish about the we'll finish uh, yeah, I promise. Okay, <laughs> about the evaluation and I'll be back. Okay. Um, we're sorry, we were a little bit um, um, late with the timing, but um, I assure you we'll, we'll finish soon. So the last part of my presentation is about how you evaluate that whatever you are doing is good, that you uh, monitor your website traffic. Um, as you uh, as you might know, um, there is a, a Google Anal we use for the Interreg Europe website um, a tool for monitoring the traffic, which is Google Analytics. It's the most known one. I, I suppose most of you know it as well. Um, and we extended this possibility of monitoring your website traffic uh, throughout Google Analytics to all your project websites as well. What can we learn by looking at the Google Analytics? Because what will happen is that starting from the 1st of July, the third call projects will receive their first Google Analytics reports. The first and second call projects already received for a while their Google reports. And in your Google reports, which is a PDF that you receive in your mailbox, you have specific indicators. What can you learn throughout these indicators? Well, you can see if you reach your targets, you can see who is actually visiting your website, what is interesting to them, and uh, how do people actually find your website. And just had to have a closer look to the monthly report that you will receive, you have on the screen the first part of the report, which shows the sessions, the users, and the page views. The sessions, you should know that the session uh, is uh, the time a user is actively engaged with your website. This is what's counted under sessions. And um, a point on that would be that uh, it is counted as a session for your website when the navigation of a particular user starts at your website. So if we have a user that goes first to the Interreg Europe homepage and only afterwards lands on your website, this will not be counted as a session for your website. It will be a session for the, for the mother website, for Interreg Europe. So you need to put uh, specific efforts in sharing and disseminating your particular project website. The users um, are uh, those that had at least one session within the selected date range. And this includes both the new and the returning users. They all go to users. The page views is the total number of pages that a user uh, sees throughout a navigation and the repeated views of a single page are counted. This is why in general it's quite um, big. In top channels, you can see how did people arrive on your website. Is it because they searched for it on Google or a different browser? Is it because they've seen it on social media? This will be under social. Is it because they knew their your exact website? They just typed it in the website address and they laid it over there? Is it because of a referral? And under referrals, you see all the other websites that actually mentioned you and like this, people ended up in your website. Then you have sessions by landing page. So what page, on which pages users actually landed, uh, you will see that they go particularly on a specific news that you uh, published and then promoted, or that they go, went directly to a folder library because you've put particular efforts in promoting. In this sessions by landing page, you will see actually your promotion uh, efforts. How did they, um, how did they uh, end up? Then we have the, the bounce and the page views. Uh, so a bounce is a visit that um, a per, when a person left the site without making any interaction. And together with the page views that you see just, uh, behind, just, be, uh, just close by, um, you can have an accurate feeling about how relevant the content on a specific page was for your audience. Did they found what they were actually expecting? or not. If the bounce rate is really big, this means they, don't, they didn't really find out what they were expecting. 
you also have we, we also included the possibility for you to know uh, two important pieces of information um, uh, meaning what type of searches people do on their website because there is the possibility to search directly on your project website um, and you will see in this field what is it that they search for uh, is it that they search for a specific partner name, for a policy instrument, uh, for a logo, as you can see on the screen, or something else? So you will see here the exact things that they typed in in the search. And then the newsletter sign-up. So if you have a newsletter sign-up system in, the, in place and then you put it on your website, we will measure how many people actually clicked on the sign-up form. Uh, and at the last, um, uh, you might be wondering how you will report the sessions, because apart from a, a very important aspect of Google Analytics is to provide you input on how you are doing with your website and is the, is the traffic um, good or not. But on the other hand, you also have the obligation to report the sessions in the progress report. And in order to facilitate this process for you and not to have to, so that you don't have to particularly look in all the monthly reports, we've put together um, a PDF on our uh, Google Drive where we've summed up for you exactly what you need to report. So just by going to the link that you see uh, on the screen, you will end up to a Google Drive and over there you will see several PDFs for first call projects for second call projects and for the third call projects will be created uh, in due time and just by clicking over there you will see according to your project acronym what is it that you need to report in the IELTS. And with this, I ended my part. Okay, thank you, Raluca, for this very extensive and detailed presentation, not only about how to edit the website, but also some tips, how to make the uh, best use of it for your project objectives, and then how to check uh, and evaluate mm -hmm. whether all this effort you put into your online communication brings fruit and brings the re required or de desired uh, target groups coming to your website. Now, let's have a look whether we have uh, further questions mm -hmm. uh, uh, related uh, to, to this. Uh, um, when I look at it, uh, it seems that we answered most of what we have, but uh, there okay. was at the begin beginning actually one question yes. that related to good practices. Uh -huh. You already mentioned uh, that uh, the third call projects do not really see mm -hmm. uh, this step yet, uh, mm -hmm. and it will come uh, a bit later. But for those who are from uh, our first and second call projects, can you maybe say a little bit more how this submission approval uh, visually, where they show up. Can you maybe say a yeah. little few words about that? Yes, I think course. that might be of interest. Yes. Uh, so about the good practices, um, let's take the role of a normal user of the Internet Europe community that uh, wants to submit a good practice. Uh, I suppose it will be one of your project partners, for example, wanting to submit a good practice because they were asked to do it. Um, then they just need to go to the good practice database, which is underneath the policy learning platform. Uh, and over there, they will click on submit a good practice. And there is a form that they need to fill in. It's a, it's a form with the various fields uh, in all needed information for that good practice. Once this person uh, submits their good practice, and an important thing that this step is that uh, in order for you to know that this good practice belongs to your project, the user needs to say it because we cannot know. We have now more than 800 good practices. Uh, we cannot check all those. So it's up to the person that submits the good practice to say that it belongs to a specific project. Let's say it's Project Resor. Um, so I, I want to submit a good practice belonging to Resor. I will fill in the form and I'll mention that it belongs to Resor. Uh, so, when it's, I, so it's similar to when uh, other users want to yeah, be linked course, to a yeah, project, yeah, yeah. there is a drop down yes. and they can select. Exactly. So, so you just select the acronym and then this is the way in which the people from Resort will know that there is a good practice waiting for them. For the good practices, there is a notification system in place. This mm -hmm. means that a, an email is sent to the website administrator of the project, in this case Resort telling them that there is a new good practice waiting for them. Because the way in which this good practice shows up on your project website is that you as a website administrator, you have a look at it, 
you you scan it, you read it, you make sure that there's proper information that needs to go on your website, and then you say, yes, it can. You also have the possibility to say, maybe, and you will ask for the user to do more uh, editing. Maybe some editing, yeah, if it's needed. Or you can say no in the possibility that there is somebody submitting something for your project even though they shouldn't. So you have the possibility to say yes, no, or maybe. Once you say yes, the good practice will show up on your project website under the tab good practices. And it will be all this is visible on your dashboard once you log in under the tab good practices. So pay attention as I already mentioned at some point, the good practice tab is not within the website edit module, but is at your dashboard level. So the, the main screen when you log in. After this first validation step, there are several other validations that are in place, meaning that once you say yes to a good practice, your policy officer will be notified about it. So they will be let know that there is this new, um, there is this good practice that was submitted under their project that they are monitoring. And they will have a look as well. And they will say, yes, this is a nice uh, good practices that we should feature uh, in our good practice database. Or they might say, no, it needs to be further worked on, uh, or no, and that's all. <laughs> um, let's say, let's take the good scenario and they say yes. If they say yes, this good practice will go to a thematic expert belonging to the policy learning platform team that will look closer to the content of your good practice. And if they approve it, it will show up on the um, good practice database. So this is yet another place on our website different to what shows up on your project website. So there might be situations in which you have 12 good practices on your project website, but only, let's say, half of them are in the good practice database. Because in the good practice database, we will feature only the top ones. Yeah, the selected, the best. Yeah, exactly. Okay, the most relevant. I hope that was clear. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, thank you very much uh, for okay. this explanation. Uh, as we have no further questions, and we are pretty really sorry for, for running late and extending this webinar a little more, uh, let me finish. So thank yes. you, Zaluka, thank very you much. Thank you, uh, bye. Thank you for uh, presenting all this information. So let me just quickly finish. Uh, Really, what are the next steps? I hope that this uh, webinar was of use to you, that we showed to those 80% with not much experience in editing website, that the tool, the way we designed it, is not that difficult uh, with a few uh, things. If you keep them in mind, uh, it should not be too difficult to edit. So, what are some of the suggestions from my side and from our side of the, of the program? First, Invite your project partners to connect to your project. As we were explaining, they should, uh, or if you decide, uh, open and register uh, their accounts in our online community. And don't forget to select your project so that you as communication um, manager or website administrator can approve them and all your partners can be nicely visible with their personal profiles on your project pages. The second one, we had a question about the poster. So very soon in the coming weeks, you will receive the posters uh, for check and then uh, for the check, first for the check, whether everything's correct. And then as soon as you confirm that everything's fine, that no further edits uh, are needed, we'll be delivering uh, these uh, poster templates for you to print and display in your institutions. Please remember, in each partner institution, you should display it. Uh, the third uh, next step or third point that I have for you is about Google Analytics. We have launched your project websites. You start editing them. Now, after this webinar, I hope it's going to, much e going to be much easier. And we have already started uh, with monitoring with Google Analytics what is happening. So you will receive your first report in the, the beginning of July. So if you told us your email addresses of, com uh, of the website administrators, also your lead partner will receive it. Uh, you will receive at the beginning of July the Google Analytics. If you don't find it, check the spam. If still in the spam, it's not. Uh, please uh, let us know. Please contact us and we will double check what is going on, why you have not received the Google Analytics report. And the third one, 
as many of you are the communication managers uh, of your projects or lead partners, uh, uh, we will organize for you a seminar to discuss even in more detail uh, how to implement your communication strategy for your project. And this seminar will happen together with a finance seminar in November. And uh, so reserve more or less three days for both seminars. So maybe one day, one day and a half for the communication, another day and a half for the finance uh, side. Uh, so in November, we will be uh, informing you very soon with specific dates. So that's uh, all uh, from our side. Uh, um, for further updates about what is happening in the program, uh, you're more than welcome uh, to sign up to the newsletter and because we update you every month about the news, new things. And you can also double check whether in this new newsletter we are featuring maybe your project with some uh, great news that you published uh, on your website. So you have a link where you can sign up for the newsletter. And then uh, some useful links. Uh, uh, my colleague uh, Josephine uh, certainly sent you a number of links in the chat uh, box. Uh, so you received uh, plenty of them and various uh, guidance and directions where to find useful information. So a few more in this presentation. So you can look at the project communication tools. It's in our library, in the program library. We'll add presentation of today's webinar in this folder so you can check it. We are recording uh, this webinar so the recording will be part of the folder as well so you can check it uh, in a few days so when it's edited and added to the library. Uh, you have a link to the help uh, page uh, for website administrators. You also have various project resources on the Google Drive where you have access to your logo. As soon as your project poster templates are finalized, they'll be there too. You have also other reporting um, tools in this Folder. So check what is for you in project resources on the Google Drive. And we have a specific page on our program website guiding you and providing you with further information about implementing your project in a very broad sense, not only communication, but in general. And with this, I thank you very much for being with us, even for longer than we expected. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Uh, when we finish uh, with this webinar, there will be a short pop-up survey, so we'll be very happy to hear from you with your comments, whether you were this was informative for you, whether this was of use to you, and please tell us also if you have any suggestions for improvement for us. So thank you very much. We'll stay uh, online for uh, about five more minutes to reply to any remaining questions that you might have submitted uh, during this uh, final words. So in typing, we'll get back to you. So stay with us if you can. If not, we can always use your email and reply to you with an email a bit later. So thank you very much for participating and see you at the communication seminar. Goodbye. <laughs>